Defence colleagues and listeners, we've just completed a six of six part series with Arpad Zakar, um, who's a uh, principal consultant with Cormis Partners and they're a search and leadership assessment firm focusing on senior level recruiting. Um, we did six elements and now the seventh roundup is basically what does the candidate expect and what impresses them when they're looking for another role. So Arpad, thoroughly enjoyed the six part series. Always a pleasure talking to you. You've got an engagement and enthusiasm for your subject matter that's, uh, you know, way above many people that I've spoken to. And, um, you know, I know how genuinely interested you are in how to make it better for people. Um, so well done to you, mate. That's really, really, I take, my, I take my hat off to you if I was wearing one. So now we've covered hiring strategy, job descriptions, appraisals. We've then done succession, company culture and benefits. And now what does the candidate expect and what impresses them? Um, this today, uh, Chris, is basically it's all about the candidate experience. That's everything. So personalization and strategic long-term um, relationship building with candidates is really helpful, really important. I think this is what you should expect as a candidate as well. Even if you don't fit a role or a position in that uh, given point in time, you never know when the next um, sort of relevant role is going to come up. So you always need to make sure that you keep up the conversation. You really uh, keep uh, keep the, uh, um, the 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 door open. Never close it. Never burn bridges. I think it's so important to just um, have this long term mindset at all times. Just because they said no to you now, it doesn't mean that they will send uh, said say no to you um, um, in the future as well. What candidates expect, Chris, most of all um, today is speed, an organized and efficient hiring process that is not a burden to the candidate. I think it's basically no ghosting, no not responding to people, being disrespectful to, um, to prospective candidates. That's the surest way to destroy your um, uh, brand and how you're perceived um, on, by the market, basically. The candidates also should and want um, better communication uh, from either the internal uh, recruitment team or HR uh, team or the, um, the search firm. Frequent, clear, transparent communication around compensation, benefit, impact, expectations. I think that's how you avoid uh, disappointment at a later stage. Basically, that's that's it's just prompt promptness. Also. Uh, what I'm seeing on a day-to-day -day basis is, there is a lot of candidates want a glimpse of the position, but also the organization. So don't just tell, but show and demonstrate the mission, the values, the employee experience, basically. Give them the opportunity to maybe um, talk to a wide variety of people uh, within the organization, perhaps even people who are working outside of the, the, uh, the business unit that they are going to be working in, so that they can really form a 360 um, view of you, the organization, and the culture of the, uh, the business, basically. So, and also, make sure that you understand that how, what, what sort of, like the the impact you are going to have the, on the organization, the meaning of the role that you are about to undertake, how does teamwork work in, in progress? So it's not like in, 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 uh, in real life there. How are you going to be recognized? Uh, what happened to the person that was um, um, in your role previously? Where are they today? Did they get promoted? Did they get moved on to another role? Um, did they get fired? I mean, you really need to know these things uh, because that's the only way that you are going to be able to really just um, uh, succeed in the long term uh, within yeah. the organization. Yeah, hundred percent. I've had a couple of people lately um, on on interviews that I've been on the panel and asking an interesting set of questions, and it's around um, service support within the business. So their main focus is how free are they going to be to focus on the core business, and do they get support services correctly? Um, you know, with the message that they are support services, they're not the be all and end all of the business. It's the core business that matters. And, um, you know, people have gone into a lot of detail, whether it be HR, finance, procurement, maintenance, transport, 
You know, they want to know that those organizations are there with a purpose, which is to support the core business, not, not create, you know, detours and, and delays and, and hurdles for them. And um, that's really, really picked up lately. So, you know, and, and I think they're right. The last thing you want to do is come in to an organization where you've got a clear strategy, clear set of objectives that you've got to, you've got to address and complete. And then you're handicapped internally because the support services think they're either bigger or better than the core business. And, um, you know, they haven't, got, they haven't got their internal SLA as such together. And the services that you're getting are, are not doing you very good, especially when it comes to customer experience or, or turnover or revenue achievement, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, precisely. And some of the most frustrating conversations that I'm having with C-level people, with board members, with, with uh, business unit leaders are all around unmet expectations, but on both ends, basically, whether it was the candidate or, or, or the candidate yeah. had different expectations when it comes to the role itself, how it fits into the, the, the overall strategy, into the, into the business unit itself, how, and, and, and what are the future prospects as well. Uh, a lot of people uh, report back that, yeah, sometimes they are just, being sold one thing at the interview stage yeah, the luring yeah. stage and then and then when when they join it's a completely different um, um, uh, landscape and picture um, how do you really make sure that it happen it doesn't happen it's by having those frequent clear transparent communications during the entire process which you should be expecting as a candidate from your search firm from your recruiter, from the in-house uh, team, from the HR department. If they don't treat you with that sort of respect, Chris, at that stage, yeah, what would you expect really as an employee? No, no, I totally agree. And, I, I, and you're right there. You know, I think sometimes some of the recruiters and some of the management that's on, on, uh, on the recruitment drives or the panels, they, they, they don't sell reality. You right. know, they sell, they sell a wish or if only. And that can have such a double, double negative impact when people realize it once they've come into the company. And you need to be careful because you don't get a second chance as an organization these days yep. um, with candidates. If they, and they sniff out a phone in a second, basically. That's, the, that's why you really need to have um, all, these, all your ducks in a row because um, people are savvy and savvier than you might think. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you something else that, that I've experienced as well lately is um, people have been recruited in quite senior positions, but they haven't lasted long because they've got a dependency on their mobile, their app. And um, you know, they're constantly, constantly on it to the point where some of the people who are reporting to them, they feel that the app, and I'm talking, when I'm saying app, I'm talking about apps on the phones, etc are taking a higher priority than them as part of their team. Well, now, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's an almost illness that's happening now, RPAD, and you'd be surprised at the level of people that are affected by it or, or hooked on it, you know? That's interesting because I, I've, I'm seeing that with the younger sort of uh, the 20s, the 30s sort of generation. But when it comes to um, the 40s, 50s and, and, and above, uh, I haven't really come across it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's an addiction if you think about it. I mean, it's basically it's something that you can get hooked on and, um, and you can really just um, have difficulties paying attention. I think there is an attention deficit here. I think it's, um, people are very short on patience and attention these days. And 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 um, and really, just to capture the attention of a candidate is such a difficult job. I mean, this is what we do. Why should I listen to you? What is what is in it for me? Why should I really pay attention to you, not yeah. my phone? So, uh, yeah, this is how you really need to think as an as an organization. Don't assume that just because you're in an Airbus, you are a a big brand. Um, don't assume that people will just naturally attract. To what you've got to offer and what you've got to say because there are others in other sectors that might offer them something just as yes. exciting if not even yeah. more yeah. So. yeah but it's um you know it's uh, it's like i say that we're, we're getting such a such a different mix of of expectation demand almost entitlement issues yeah. And, yeah, you know, yeah. some of the things that being, uh, being missed out now are, you know, some basic discipline, some basic respect, humility, attitude and aptitude. And, um, you know, some good old, and I'm, it's not because of my age or yeah. history or whatever, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of, of, of young people and old people 
who fall into that category. And there's a lot of old and young people who realise that things have to change. And in some cases, that little bit of respect, that little bit of humility, that little bit of understanding goes an awful long way. That, no, I, I would second that because it's basically, it just shows the organisation as well that you are not full of yourself. I think it, having that good balance between the humility and the, and the competent um, um, uh, individual who really knows where their limitations are and they're not overselling themselves or not selling themselves as, as a jack or jill of all trades, but are um, accepting that they're, they might not have all the answers but together we will be able to tackle the the challenges that you are seeing. I think it's it's really it's I, I call it intellectual humility. Um, uh, Chris, that's I think that's what we are talking about basically. Yeah. Understanding that you are not uh, a toolbox that is good for everything, but you are um, you will you have weaknesses. Uh, you like it or not? Yep. No, hundred percent, Arfet. Hundred percent. So for those who are for those who are looking for senior roles, good luck to you. For those who are employing senior roles, good luck also. Um, but for each side, you know, remember that it's together. Together you bridge, you know, you bridge whatever challenges are there and it's together you win. So the more transparent and honest, and like I said, you know, each side should not sell if only or wishes. They should be selling reality and commitment. And, um, and a lot of transparency needs to be there. So... Arpad, absolutely lovely to get a window into, into your world and the window into the passion that you've got for your subject matter. So I wish you great success and look forward to seeing you very soon. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Thank you for the opportunity to do this together. Yeah, really enjoyed Always it. Always a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure.